WWE TLC, the last pay-per-view of the calendar year, not the year in WWE. Oof, uh, 12 freaking matches? You have got to be kidding me. There has to be some squashes here, and there has to be some changes. If they had another match, I'll be shocked. Actually, I wouldn't be. It's WWE. Vince is unpredictable. Vince is out of touch. Who knows? Tables, ladders, chairs, and everything else in between. What a show ahead of us. Let's break it down. Hello there. I'm just a simple man. And my name is Noah Foster. And tonight, I am going to be going through the WWE TLC match card, throwing my predictions. Folks, we got a long one ahead of us, but I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not going to rant. I'm going to try and be quick and simple about it. So with that, let's get started. So the first match I see here is a match that got officially confirmed tonight. Rey Mysterio versus Randy Orton. Chairs match. So Randy Orton's been on this vendetta about destroying everything we love, our childhood heroes, and apparently taking uh, Rey Mysterio's mask. Although TJP beat him to that with Lucha House Party. But I digress. Chairs match. Gimmick match. Who benefits? Who needs the win? Let me see. Well, it, based on what I read, it looks like win or lose does affect Randy Orton. And honestly, I don't know what they're going to do with Ray, whether or not put him in the U.S. title picture or try and reinvent Royal Rumble 2006 moment, I believe it was. So I'm just going to literally say that <clears throat> I believe that Randy Orton is going to win this match. And the reason that I say that is because he's been on this tear. Um, Rey Mysterio, he just came back, but there's nothing going for him. Maybe it will set up another match between them or some sort of build to the Royal Rumble. I don't honestly know, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that, you know what, no, let me, no, let me change that. Based on uh, the fact that he just came back, I'm hoping for bigger things. Why does Randy need to continue feeling with Ray? This isn't 2000 freaking sticks. I'm officially saying Rey Mysterio wins this chairs match. That's my final answer, and that's all I have to say about that. Next up, we got the Cruiserweight title between Buddy Murphy and Cedric Alexander. 205 Live matters, people, okay? Realize that. 205 Live matters. It could be one of the best matches of the night, if given the time. But damn sure it doesn't belong on the kickoff show. Sorry about that. <clears throat> anyway. The Cruiserweight title is one of the more valued titles in WWE for the longevity of it and the fact that it's all 205 Live has. I don't see uh, Cedric Alexander getting it back this quickly. I see Buddy Murphy retaining it and I see us moving on to another feud, maybe with Tony Nese, maybe with Noah Dar. Heck, maybe somehow they'll reinvent Drew Gulak. I can only hope. There's like 15 odd people on the roster. But honestly, I don't see Cedric winning. If anything, I see Cedric turning heel, Mustafa going after the title, and Cedric causing Mustafa the title. We got that heel face type of vendetta between these two as uh, Mustafa goes after the title down the line. But bottom line, I see Buddy Murphy retains the title. Okay, what is this? Freaking WCW. We have Elias versus Bobby Lashley in a ladder match where the guitar is the prize you're going for. It's a freaking guitar match, people. It's Elias's guitar. This is almost the same as Triple H versus freaking Kevin Nash in a sledgehammer match back at Night of Champions. Or was it Clash back then? I don't remember. Anyway, this match, complete throwaway. I don't see any way Elias is losing this. I'm, I'm pretty sure Heath Slayer's not even going to be the referee. Elias is going to win this match. He's going to smash the guitar over Bobby Lashley, maybe even Leo Rush, and then just drift away on Bobby Lashley. Simple as that. Finn Balor versus Drew McIntyre sounds interesting when you think about it, but the way it's been booked and built and the fact that Finn's just a smile guy, a hey, that freaking seemed to have forgot how to do his demon entrance, according to reports. Damn you, Vince. Sorry again. Uh, uh, there's nothing to gain here for Finn winning. Drew has got to be the next guy you imagine to help carry the company. He's one of the hottest heels right now without using death freaking story and backstories. So I'm going to say that Drew McIntyre is winning this match. The only way possibly that Finn could win this match is if he comes like at the Demon. But based on everything I've seen, I highly doubt that's going to happen. It's not like we remember what happened between him and AJ at TLC. Would they repeat that? 
with Vince, I highly doubt it. So I'm going to say that Drew McIntyre is going to win this match, once again, burying Finn even further. I really hope things do improve him in 2019. Let's get a full fledged draft and get him on SmackDown. Drew's going to win this match. That's my quick. Natalia vs. Ruby Riot. This match got a whole new dimension of emotion and cheap heat on Monday night, but that table, that table's got to be your finisher. That table's got to be the spot. I don't see this being similar to that dumb tag team tables match between Lay Cool and Beth and Natalia, where Lay Cool went for the custom table. But then again, Ruby Riot, I feel, is potential to be. Raw Women's Champion. I would love to see that. And based on what's been going on, and I don't really see Natalia having something big one after this. He's, she's still around as friend. I don't see them turning her heel. I'm going to say Ruby Riot's going to win this tables match, and Natalia's probably not going to go necessarily through that table, but bottom line, she's going to go through a table. So, my pick for this match is Ruby Riot for the win. Triple Fret SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match. It's not even a ladder match, but I'm okay with that. The Bar versus the New Day versus the Usos. Well, let's see. All three of them have been former champs. The Bar is currently the champ. Who benefits the most? Who can gain the most? Who can use it the most? I don't want to see the New Day as champs again. I'm kind of tired of it. The Usos have got to be the best tag team going today on the mainstream roster. Whether they're rapping, whether they're wrestling, whether they're characters. The Usos is the best tag team on the main roster. Simple as that. So, honestly, I want to see the Usos win this. As far as what happens next, maybe we'll finally get to see Sanity actually have something. Or the Good Brothers. I don't even know where the heck they are. But, as far as this match, my pick is the Usos for the win. Especially because it's not a ladder match. If it was ladder, I probably would have picked New Day because of the numbers. But, again, my pick for this match is the Usos. Ron Strowman vs. Baron Corbin, ELC. <laughs> this is going to be a squash. Let's face it. Nobody wants to continue to see Baron Corbin become manager, nor be permanent general manager. It's almost like we're trying to recreate the John Laurinaitis storyline. Remember that? People power! Anyway, <clears throat> there's no way I see Baron Corbin winning this match and becoming permanent GM. But based on what I've heard, Braun Strowman might not be the guy that gets the job done. What I'm really optimistic on is I'm hoping Bray Wyatt comes into play, comes in as this character of, take down the machine! And we get Matt Hardy as the new GM, which I feel like would be a very interesting dynamic for the Monday Night Raw roster. Although, now that I figure about it, maybe they can bring like a real throwback or something and do Sting. How shocking would that be? But, bottom line, I'm going off topic. And, again, I this card, ugh. I'm going to say that Baron Corman loses, whether or not it's by Braun Strowman or Bray Wyatt or, heck, even a Rhino interference, because you know Heath Slayer's probably going to be the match in this. I don't see Baron Corman winning. So, based on the fact the card says Baron, Braun Strowman, I'm going with Braun Strowman or whoever is fighting in his place. Intercontinental Championship match between Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. This could have been so much hotter like their match back at Money in the Bank when Seth Rollins was under the authority 3.0. But what they reduced this to is, I don't like this smell, and you got to bring Roman Reigns into this. Leave the guy freaking alone. Leave him out of storyline. Let him recover. Roman, get well soon, big dog. So, <clears throat> but looking at the direction of the company and figured about what could be next, I hope Seth Rollins does become Universal Champion, and we get a full close into that. And Brock goes on to MMA. We're good. So with that, because we do have at least two more pay-per-views before WrestleMania, I'm going to go with Dean Ambrose on this one. Despite, despite the uh, cold, the gold chain, and the poor heel promo type build-up this match had. I feel like Dean Ambrose is going to win this match here. They'll probably be facing each other again at World Rumble, but maybe something will change and Rollins will be in the World Rumble and become the winner. Then again, this might go all the way to the Chamber, and he wins the Chamber this year. I honestly wanted him to win. <clears throat> Excuse me. I honestly wanted him to win this year. So, my pick for this match is going to be Dean Ambrose becomes the new IC champ. And I wouldn't be surprised if he uses a low blow. 
So Dean Ambrose for the win. All right. Oh, God. This entire freaking Mixed Match Challenge Season 2 has been an absolute disaster. Rare to none team stayed in together as a whole during the whole freaking thing about a partner getting injured or being substituted, etc. I could care less about this match, and I hope it's on the kickoff show, but it's a match, so I'm going to say it anyway. I don't want to. Our Truth and Camilla, the Fabulous Truth, versus Jinder Mahal and his partner, Alicia Fox. The winner becomes the 30th entrance, respectively, in the Rumbles and get a paid vacation. Let's see. Who do I really want to win this versus who I think is going to win this? When was the last freaking time Alicia Fox was close to ever winning a Royal Rumble? She never has. And Jinder Mahal, nobody needs a championship range from that guy again. So, based on that, and based on my friend for the love of dance breaks, and based on the fact I just like our truth, and sometimes I say my bad, I'm going to go with Fabulous Truth on this one to win. Whether they go on vacation, who knows? That's not even part of this prediction. Maybe to Edie. <laughs> then again, when you come to our truth, it might be to his mother's house. He doesn't know half the time where he is. Character or not, I don't know. Freaking funny. But I'm going to go with the Fabulous Truth winning this. And I pray to God that they do. And we'll see what happens. Whether or not they win the Rumbles, I think neither of them will. But I think it will be extremely entertaining if they did. Especially if they started each of their entrances with a dance break. I'm pretty dang sure Carmella will regardless of winning or losing. But as far as this match goes, please be on the kickoff. I say the Fabulous Truth are going to win. Alright, so now we got all that out of the way. Let's get to the actual matches I truly care about. The serious ones. The WWE Championship match. Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles. Oh, oh, wait. Let me change that. The new Daniel Bryan versus the former champ. The phenomenal AJ Styles. This match is going to be extremely interesting to me. I love the character evolution of Daniel Bryan. But AJ literally has built and carried SmackDown Live. It really is the house that A. J. Styles built. But he's already been champ for nearly a year. He's in contract negotiations. He wants a lighter schedule. If you're the WWE champ, you're obviously going to have the heaviest schedule in the company, or at least you should. And whether or not this made events or not, who friggin' knows with Vince. But based on character evolution, thinking again about 2019, looking at both men. And the fact that his reign really just started, and there's no way as hot as he is now I see him losing. i got to go with Daniel Bryan for the win here. Whether or not it's DQ, low blow, or just an absolute battering, and he actually pins the guy, or makes him submit to that heel lock, is up in the air. But in my opinion, I see Daniel Bryan winning and retaining the title. And we'll see what happens as far as his WrestleMania build. I've already read rumors about it and alleged plans, but I'm not going to say anything about that. We'll see what happens. Because all that matters is this Sunday. Daniel Bryan for the win. I forgot about this one. I'm going to make this as simple as I can. Ronda Rousey versus Nia Jax. I don't care. There's no way they're freaking going to put the title on Nia. Nobody wants to see Nia as champion. The heat in the fist fiend's going to die after TLC because Becky's not going to face Nia anytime soon. Because, remember, Raw and SmackDown only face each other one time a year at Survivor Series. So with that said, Ronda Rousey's going to retain the title. And honestly, I hope she does break Nia's arm. And we don't hear Nia do a promo for a long dang time. And then she could fade away to obscurity and maybe become, like, I don't know, uh, Alexa's lack again. If she becomes GM or stays the GM of the women. I can honestly care about this match. Ronda is going to win. Period. Simple as that. All right. <clears throat> now that I got that off of my chest, let's get to the one match we all care about. The one match we all want to see. The one match that actually makes this card truly worth watching, in my opinion. SmackDown Live Women's Championship match. 
Asuka versus Charlotte versus Becky Lynch. Where do I begin? Man, I've already confessed, and I stand by my word. I am a lifelong Becky Lynch fan. Been a fan of her before WWE, and I've been a fan of her since she came in like this happy, smiley little leprechaun, turning into the badass steampunk character, and absolutely love it. I kind of wish she has some new heel music, but I feel like that's going to happen at WrestleMania via Nita Strauss, which would be freaking awesome. What a performance, by the way, uh, this year's WrestleMania for her, for uh, Nakamura. <clears throat> but anyway, let's look at this here. So... Becky, she became champ finally back at SummerSlam, and she truly has taken over the business. The internet has become the most over thing in the company, as if she wasn't over with fans already. And you have Charlotte and Asuka with previous history, going all the way back to WrestleMania, where Charlotte ended the streak. And then Asuka faded obscurity and was doomed to poor booking at the point of losing to Carmella, where she was champ. Even though Charlotte's also lost to uh, Carmella like three times now, if you ask Carmella. But, oh, man, this is tough. I don't know if I really want to see Charlotte again as champ, but I don't know if I want to see Charlotte versus Becky at WrestleMania. Because if Becky keeps the title, then you're not going to get Ronda versus Becky because Ronda's not going to be moved, in my opinion, to SmackDown before WrestleMania. If I was booking WrestleMania, I would want the main event match to be Becky versus Ronda. I truly do. But do I want to see Charlotte versus Asuka again? And do I even want to see Charlotte as champ? But then again, I look at the other dynamic of Asuka as champ. She truly showed something to me again tonight. That fire, that rage, that heel-like persona. I freaking loved it. And I really do want her to become champ. She deserves to. But I don't want her to be doomed to like, oh, you got to remain undefeated, booking, blah, 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 blah. And it's also a TLC match, which means anything goes and you have to climb for the title. <sighs> Oscar's already been in the last woman standing match back in TLC with uh, Nikki Cross. That was incredible. So obviously they're already used to ladders, tables, and chairs. Charlotte, she's gone heel apparently, and she has gone berserk to the point she's willing to do anything it takes to win or just, in the end, prove a point, I am the dominant female. But it's hard to go against the man. I want Ronda versus Becky to happen, but I don't know if I want her to lose the title yet. So... With that, and thinking about the Royal Rumble, I'm going to say, for my prediction, that Asuka is going to become the new SmackDown Live Women's Champion. Yep. I'm going to say that Asuka becomes the new SmackDown Live Women's Champion, and the closing out is going to involve somehow Charlotte versus Becky being the crap out of each other. Asuka comes in like a raging fire. You think that both of them are down. Asuka goes for the title. Nope. Becky comes into play. Then Charlotte comes into play. We have all three of them at the top. Two of the women fall probably through the table. Maybe two. We get like a stack spot like Unforgiven in 2006. But I'm going to say that Asuka becomes the new SmackDown Live Women's Champion. Even though Becky has that awesome new Titan song. I got to go with Asuka on this one. She deserves it. Okay? And I don't want to see Charlotte versus Asuka anymore. I'm hoping that at least maybe like Sonya Deville or one of my other favorites, Peyton Royce going after uh, Asuka for the title. Or hell, even Naomi for that matter. Former tag team partner. She goes, hail, the team breaks up. So with that, I'm going to say that Asuka wins the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. Whew, what a card. So, just to go again in summary. W Championship, Daniel Bryan. Intercontinental Championship, Dean Ambrose. Braun Strowman, whoever the hell is in that match. Uh, Ronda Rousey. Asuka. The Usos. Ruby Riot. Drew McIntyre. Elias. Bring, Buddy Murphy. Randy Orton. And the Fabulous Truth. There you go, folks. 12 matches. Holy cow. 12 matches. What a way to close out 2019 for WWE. Am I right? And it's not even their full, like, year yet. They have, like, Royal Rumble, Elimination Chamber. I don't know if they're going to have Fastlane. And then we got WrestleMania. We don't even know a single match yet that's going to be on that card. We got rumors and proposals, but it's still all up in the air. But, anyway. Oof. Uh, what a night. What a way to close out 2019. With that, I'm just a simple man. And I'm just a lifelong fan of wrestling. So, 
with that, please share your comments, like, subscribe, hit the little bell. Let me know if you have thoughts. Let me know if you have your own. I love to hear them. I love to read them. Support NoDQ.com because they are a big reason why I do this. They're a great community, and they keep you up to date with the latest wrestling news, whether it's truth, rumor, or humor. You never know what you're going to get from these people. They're all pretty awesome. Support your wrestling outlets, both big and small, indie, mainstream, development, etc. Support Pro Wrestling Tees. And again, people, be friendly, and let's grow this wrestling community together. Simple as that. Simple as that. It is currently 11.03 p.m. on the East Coast on December 11, 2018, that I am reporting these predictions. And yes, I am going up against the No DQ family for the current reigning champions, TJS's, Predictions Championship belt. There are big plans for that, too, in 2019, and I'd love to contribute and help them with that, too. We'd love for y'all to be part of it. So, please, share with us your thoughts. So with that, I know I'm rambling, but this is what I do. Still used to this. Getting used to this. What are you going to do? <clears throat> I'm done. Be sure to tune in for NoDQ.com for their predictions. Both the men's and the women's will be sharing their own. Be sure to tune in this Sunday for WTLC and live coverage of where the predictions leagues stand. And as always, this channel is a simple pay-per-view channel for now. It might become something bigger later. We'll see. So with that, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all keep committing to the wrestling community. I hope you all enjoy life. And with that, have a good night. And see you in 2019 for the Royal Rumble. Maybe even Wrestle Kingdom 13. I haven't decided yet. Later.